Well, good evening, greetings, and salutations. This is Passionate Bliss, and I want to tell you about my walk through the YouTube streets. Okay, so I was walking through the YouTube streets, and I saw a group of you standing around, and you were out there looking like this. Yes, a couple of you, and you were talking, and apparently you were upset. You were so upset because one of your village elders, Monique, actually had the audacity to tell you that this was not cute to be out in the streets, that you should not be this way in the airport, you should not be this way in the store, you should not come out of your house looking like this. She asked that you carry yourself with dignity and respect, befitting of the queen that you are, or that you should be, okay? And apparently you all were so upset about this that you wanted to cancel Monique. So I was a little bit confused, I asked some questions. I said, okay, so let me get this straight. You all are wanting to cancel Monique because you actually think that you look really fly looking like this, okay? And you actually think that this is the way to go, looking like this. This is what's hot in the streets right now, that you go outside looking like this. So I just wanted to make sure I understood, because sometimes I get confused, you know, at my age. Okay, so you're seriously thinking about canceling one of your village elders who did what she's supposed to do, give you advice to young women who clearly didn't have a mother to tell them, you don't go outside looking like this. Okay, so she felt that it was her duty to pick up that role that somebody else dropped. Okay. Um, however, where I do disagree with her is she said that you should also, when you're out there, tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them, sister, we don't go out looking like this. Mm -mm. Now, she's correct. You, you look a hot mess in that bonnet like that. And I'm not going to stand here that long talking with you looking like that because I can't be seen with you with them bonnets on, okay? Um, but, you know, she was correct in telling you, you don't go out the house looking like that. I have had to send my child back in the house for looking like that. I've sent my niece back in the house. You're not coming to the grocery store with me like that at all, Okay. Um, she's been on pajamas, you put on clothes and comb your hair, put in a ponytail. You can do that. Okay. So, um, you know, I agree with her on that, but tapping somebody else, no, you out of line and you don't tell them what's going to happen to you for, uh, telling strangers what to do. Now you are obligated to tell your family, your immediate friends, your immediate circle, maybe a coworker or something like that, but not strangers. You don't know. Um, and the thing about people were saying, um, I'm comfortable like this. This is how I'm going out. I feel good, you know, and uh, I'm relaxed and I'm comfortable. Um, so I can agree with Monique to an extent. Now, she saw that talking about, she saw it in the airport. And I agree with her there in the airport because the airport is an international setting. Okay. You could be seeing people from any country, anywhere um, around the world, all walks of life at the airport. And do you really want to be presented internationally as a coon in a bonnet? Okay, because that's what people see when, that's what they think for the most part when they see you. Look at this coon in a bonnet, okay? Last time I was at the airport, I ran into Waka Flocka and I went up to him and I took a picture with him. Okay, now if I had on a bonnet and my pajamas, you think I would have went up to Waka Flocka and took a picture with him? Okay, so you don't know who you're going to meet in a place like an airport. So I would not advise going to an airport looking that way. However, I have run to the grocery store looking that way. <laughs> because, but it was like last minute. I figured nobody's going to see me. It was late in the night. Um, I thought I had four eggs. I only had two. So I had to run out. I had on the bonnet. I threw on a sweater and I went out. I was in and out of that store 10 minutes. I was back home. Um, low chance of anybody seeing me. So I could see you running to the gas station, to the corner store, real quick and back in your bonnet. But if you go out actually on a shopping spree like that, and it's apparently it's very popular, and black women are not the only ones doing it. Okay? Apparently it's a thing now. However, it's not a cute thing. I'm just here to back Monique up and say, that ain't nothing you need to do. Um, because somebody should have told you. If your mama didn't tell you, somebody should have told you. So Monique told you, and I told you. Because the thing about it is this. My other question is this. Do you really believe that it takes a village to raise a child? Okay. Do you believe that you are a part of a community as a black person? Do you believe that you are a part of a village? Okay. If you do believe that, then you should accept Monique as a village elder telling you, young lady, this is not the way to go. Because everybody in the village did not have a mother to tell them, this is not the way to go. Go back in the house with them tight clothes on. Take up all that makeup. You're too young. Put on a longer dress than that. It's too short. Don't carry yourself out there with a bonnet. Go back in the house and put on some clothes. You don't walk out in pajamas and, and, uh, and flip-flops and uh, bedroom shoes. Okay? Everybody in the village didn't have a mother to tell them that. And Monique sees it as her duty as a village elder to tell you, okay, sweetie, we don't do this. Okay? And so she should not be counseled for that. She should not be judged for that. That's her job. She was doing it. Some of us take our role as a village elder seriously. I take it seriously. But my um, channel is a relationship channel. So I focus on relationship issues. And um, I do that through my Black Love t-shirt collection, which I'll be getting back to shortly. Okay? So um, she's taking her job as a village elder seriously. 
like I do, and we will speak to people. I speak to you on my channel. She speak to you on her channel, <laughs> you know, but y'all ain't tried to cancel me yet, but who knows, it might be coming. So anyway, I can't stand around here with y'all in those bonnets on too long. I have to go, and I'm walking down the street. I see two little cute girls down the street, okay? These two little cute girls, one is Portia Williams, the other one is Fallon Gubedo, whatever her name is, okay? These are two living examples of Kevin Samuels' high-value women, this is a living example of what happens to high value women. Okay. Kevin Samuel said that you are valued when you're a high value woman for your beauty, for your physique, for being uh, agreeable and for being pleasant. And, um, you also, in his scenario, you have to be young under 25 and childbearing age. Okay. Uh, reportedly one of the women is pregnant. Reportedly the other one would like to still continue having children. They both already have children. Okay. But to me, it's a cautionary tale. Because these two beautiful young women were out on the market. They have consistently both married wealthy men. And um, they have consistently been uh, left by these wealthy men or abused by these wealthy men. Abused in a way that one was cheated on and the other one, you know, has been married and divorced um, at this point. But the end of the tale is they were in competition for the same man. The one ended up taking the husband from the other one. A $40 million man. Okay. So this is what happened at the end of Kevin Samuel's story for you ladies. Okay, you get into this great shape. You become very agreeable. You become pleasing to these men. You set yourself on a market to compete. When you're on the market, that means someone comes and purchases you. You become an object. You become the cutest, hottest, latest thing. Your decoration on his arm. So just like his car, just like his couch, just like his bed, just like his clothes, his suits, his shoes. Guess what happens when you get worn out? When time passes by? Guess what? You're not the hottest thing on the market anymore. You're not the latest fashion. You're not the newest trend. So guess what? You get replaced. And this is what happened to Fallon. And this is how she felt about it. Take a listen. Thank you. I will say I am done with dating rich guys. Rich, I mean, he was the first, you know, older, not only older, but um, wealthy man I have ever been with. And I think I'm just ready to uh, be with somebody who just knows how to respect me and love me back in the way I love. Because I, lo I love hard. I love really hard. And, um, you know, someone, someone better is out there who can respect that. So, ladies, when you set yourself up on this path that Candidate Samuels has set out for you and you present yourself as an object to be bought and sold, guess what? When your time is up and you're no longer cute, you're no longer flashy, you're no longer young, time has caught up with you, which it inevitably will, you get replaced. And um, Fallon is here to tell you all about it. And with that being said, y'all have sweet dreams. Wait to find them all real.